Ahoy there, all ye who feel the need for speed. Get ready to start your engines and race to the fish as we battle for possession of the coveted pirate's flag. So fasten your seatbelts and I'll see you at the finish line. Okay, here we go. Let's start with a captain card each. You can all choose the ones that you want, or you can just pick wildly. Place them text side up, then grab a ship for them to sail on. Whatever color you get, take the matching helper card. And then just place the ship off the side of the board by the Dread Sea space. Now on the other end of the board lies the Dread Captain's ship. This is where the flag goes. Next, take the cards out of the box. Please note that the insert cleverly resembles a skull, which is fun. But what's less fun is the struggle to remove the cards without flipping the box upside down. So we recommend ye old ribbon for better removal. Okay, moving on. Shuffle said cards and set them nearby. Also place both dice, which you'll now use to determine the first player. And they're off. On a player's turn, they'll roll two dice. That is, until the flag is in play, but more about that later. The result is the exact number of spaces you'll be moving. Now, pick a direction and go! You'll also get to play one card. Once you have cards, that is. These can be used for movement or battle, whichever they're good for. There are also some features on the board itself you should be aware of, such as waterfalls. These are one-way shortcuts. Just follow the arrows if you choose to go that way. There's a recommended rule that says to drop the flag if you go through one, but it's optional. Decide before you begin. If you find a card that refers to the proximity of ships, for instance, if a ship is two spaces away, it doesn't refer to shortcuts. You got to go the long way in this case. The yellow lines are docks. Cross one and draw a card. If the deck be ever empty, reshuffle it. Your hand limit is five, unless told otherwise, so you can only draw up to that number. Hazards can be good or bad. Plus one spaces will push you forward in the direction you are traveling, one space if you land on one. If it says minus one, then it pushes you back the way you came. And trading posts let you discard one card and draw two. My kind of profit. To use one, you must end your movement on one. Starting there doesn't count. But wait. Captain, I hear you say. You said we had to move the exact number of spaces we rolled. Aye, I did, but for every rule in life, there be an exception. There are four times ye are allowed to stop moving, and this is any time you move, whether by dice or by card effect. Let's break those down. If you pick up the flag in open water, if you wish to battle a flag-bearing opponent, if you reach the aforementioned post for trading, and finally, if you reach the other end of the board. In this case, if you don't want to stop, just bounce off the wall and head the other way. There are also exceptions to the play one card per turn rule, for that matter. First of all, you get to play one card on anyone's turn, not just your own. And some cards can be played in addition to the one card you get to play normally. They should tell you when this is the case, and they should have a red wheel on them. You also have this handy power on your captain's card, which you can use once per game. You might want to save it for an emergency. However, we're here to capture the flag. The first player to reach the Dread Captain's ship takes the flag and places it in the opening in the rear of their ship. We'll call it the Aft Hole. It's not called the Aft Hole. Well, I call it that. Don't call it that. Aft Hole. After putting the flag on your ship, that player also has a plus one hand size for the rest of the game. Remember that in any way you can. Another thing is that from now on, all players will roll one die instead of two. Make sure you remember to do this because we manage to keep forgetting. If a player catches up to the flag bearer or starts a turn next to one, they may choose to battle, which is a simple business. Or is it? Each player rolls one die and re-rolls ties. The highest number wins, but you may still be able to play cards, which can really change things up. If the flagless attacker wins, move the flag to their ship and roll a d6. Pick a direction and take off like a shot. If the flag bearing defender wins, the prize remains wedged securely in their aft on their ship, and the attacker's movement phase ends. When your turn ends, pass the die or dice to the next player as a visual aid for whose turn it is. Needless to say that the winner is the one who gets the flag back where the madness all began! Congrats, mate! So, what do we think? 
Well, what do we think? As a gaming experience, this is a fun one. So make sure that fun is what you're after. This isn't exactly what you'd call a strategy game. What it is, is a fast-paced spectacle that's likely to get your party's blood pumping as they fight for control of an uncontrollable situation. The first part of the game can feel a bit slow as you each crawl towards the flag. Perhaps hoarding a handful of cards to use on your fellow captains once the flag is liberated from its hidey hole. But once that flag is on a ship, it's not unlike a game of Smash Brothers. Yes, the video game, where things happen so fast it's all you can do to keep track of your objective. It does happen sometimes that everyone runs out of usable cards, and in which case, the game occasionally slows to a crawl. This is a rollin' move, after all, but don't let that mechanic get you down. The game is all about the cards and their effects, so manage your hand carefully until you get a bit more experience under your baldric. Deciding between pursuing the current flag bearer or going after more cards to use against them is stressful, but also part of the fun. And the other players will be facing similar dilemmas, so try to enjoy their indecision. Plus, even if one person falls behind, they can be assured that player three will be attempting to wrestle the flag from the current owner's hands when they arrive. And don't worry if you fall out of action from time to time. It's always anybody's game. It's a dog pile, the likes of which you haven't seen since the grade school playground. And we had a blast with it. Well, that's our impression. Short and sweet. If it sounds like a good fit for your party, then we advise you to pick it up. It's good for the kids. It's a good in-betweener for your group. Or good for livening up a party. And if you're a sucker for the theme, like we are, then you can't go wrong here. It's easy to learn, fast to play, and hard to take too seriously. Even if you lose, you're still having fun, and you need games like that around. Well, there you have it. Anything to add, Ms. Bottle Scotch? In fact, I do. Who won that last game again? I. You did. Well, anyway, that's all the time we have for this Pirate's Parlay. And as they say, stab that subscribe button and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and especially Patreon, where our finest patrons meet and enjoy the elite status as our most trusty crew, such as our newest hand on deck, Van Overbay, Cheers to you, Captain, and thanks to all who've joined up so far. You keep this boat of ours afloat. And check out our new buttons, which are available exclusively through our social media at the moment. At least until we can get our store worked out. Pirate Gamer Pride is what we're all about. Connect up with us, and we'll be glad to tell you how you can get one of these beauties of your very own. So, until next time, thanks for sailing in, and make sure to return soon for more reviews and shenanigans. Race you back. Vroom, vroom. That word does not exist here. And check us out on Facebook, Twitter, it, Twitter? Vroom, vroom. You made a sentence so long-winded even you had to catch your breath at the end of it. Anyway.